It's time for Supply Chain Now Radio, sponsored by Apex Atlanta and Talent Stream. Broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia, Supply Chain Now Radio spotlights the best in all things supply chain. The people, the companies, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. Now, here are your hosts. All right, Scott Luton with Supply Chain Now Radio live with you here again from uh, Jumpstart 19, courtesy of our friends at SMC3. Uh, this is the place to be if you're in supply chain this week. Uh, I want to thank our co-host, Will Haraway, for joining me again for our cleanup session. Right, number four? It's either David Justice or Fred McGriff. It depends on the year. That's right. <laughs> Not I Barry Bonds? Uh, well, well for, you know what? In, I think he hit third on those teams. I think Bonilla yeah. was fourth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think you're right. Uh, and so our guests may be here and there. Our, uh, our audience may be here and there. Our uh, guest for this segment, Don Newell with Newell Enterprises. Good morning, Don. Good morning. So, uh, Don, you were highly recommended by Kevin Springer with SMC3. We just wrapped up a segment with Kevin, and we were talking about some of what you do uh, in industry. But before we get there in, in terms of how you're helping your clients solve problems, let's talk a bit, a little bit about your background and your journey uh, in the transportation industry. How, how did you get here? Uh, this long story because I've had 42 years oh, in wow. the LTL industry. Wow. So, so we got we're gonna have to take the Reader's Digest version yep. of those 42 years. Uh, I started with Roadway Express back in 1976. Mm. Uh, had a 28 year career with Roadway. At the end of that career, I was more or less in charge of the W and I program for Roadway Express. For those of you who don't know, that's weighing and inspection where mm. the LTL carrier checks the freight to make sure it's properly stated weights mm. and classifications. So no one's, no one's sneaking in gold bars into these uh, shipments, right? It's going to weigh well, it down. Well, as a matter of fact, I once saw a shipment of gold bars <laughs> on a dock, and it was scary <laughs> But uh, to, to imagine that. But, wow. uh, so that's how I got involved in it. And then uh, when the YRC merger came about, things changed for me, and I decided to retire. And I was lucky enough to latch on with NMFTA, National Motor Freight yeah. Traffic Association. Yeah which is uh, allowed me to continue to do what I love to do, which is work with people, work with their freight, talk about classification, trying to get their, their shipments correct so that they don't have problems. Mm. I just finished uh, up on, I was a member of the CCSB, Commodity Classification Standards Board, which actually decided or decides uh, what goes into the NMFC and uh, retired as of the end of this year. Uh, for a lot of reasons, but mostly my wife, uh, and uh, decided to put out a shingle and see what I could do in the industry to keep doing what I like to do. Mm. So, so the, back to the NMFTA, yep. wh where's that based? It's based out of Alexandria, Virginia. Okay. Uh, capital of associations of the world. Mm. There's so many associations there, but uh, they were very good to me. They brought me in, uh, gave me a shelter from uh, my retirement from the merger, and allowed me to do what I like to think I'm good at mm. and work with people on classification issues. In the last four or five years with NMFTA is when I started coming to these conferences. And uh, I basically became NMFTA's voice in the industry defending the use of the classification in the uh, ever-present debate about density-based pricing versus using the classification. Mm. Interesting. And, and, and what specifically, do you have a certain role with them? Are you a board member? Are you a, just a, an, a representative, an associate, or how do you? Well, I was. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm out now as oh. of December 20, uh, 31st. Oh, okay. But uh, I, that. I started, they, they hired me as a WNR specialist. The idea was to help carriers develop their WNR programs, which I did a lot of. Um, and then became a member of the CCSB, uh, the body that does sit and decide what goes into the NMSC. Uh, my primary uh, position there was taking calls and emails to help people classify their freight to resolve disputes between mm. shippers and carriers uh, and so forth. But like I was saying, the last, about 2015, I started coming to these things, sitting on panels, making presentations, um, debating the issue of density versus use of the classification. And Don is referring to, as we sit here at Jumpstart 19, uh, the, the programming is taking place right behind us in the ballroom here. And, and so, Don, you, you do a lot of 
panel discussions and sharing your subject matter expertise these things huh I, I've done several yeah. for, anime, for uh, excuse me SMC yep. uh, this meeting I'm not involved with a specific uh, program I hope to be in connections and uh, have a presentation there so um, shifting gears a little bit in terms of what you're doing now with your consulting practice mm -hmm. right um, what are some of the things you're involved in? What, what are some of the conversations, some of the problems? That is it just an extension of what you have been doing with uh, MTF? For, for the most part, it is. Uh, what I've found is I have a freedom now to speak that I didn't when I was with Element of TA. It's liberating. Yeah, ah. it is, very. Uh, I've discovered LinkedIn. I've published a couple articles on LinkedIn about a couple different subjects. Um, density-based versus classification, and, and dimensioners. Um, my experience with working with carriers has given me a lot of experience with the different kinds of dimensioning devices that they are deploying. Uh, I know some numbers, and I know who's using what, and, and it's amazing to see how they are embracing that technology to gain, primarily to gain better information about their shipments mm. so that they can cost them accurately so that they can price them accurately. Yeah, uh, and you know, al along with anybody that's following this stuff, uh, it's certainly in the LTL market, should really follow Don on LinkedIn. Uh, I, I noticed your, you know, precise dimensions for LTL shipments blog just the other day, and you, you seem quite active on there and, and giving out all kinds of, like you said, it's freeing to be able to to speak your mind. I can see that you're. You're doing that almost uh, weekly here. This is mm. excellent. Well, it, this is the first month I've really gotten into LinkedIn, and, yeah. and it has been liberating. It really has. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I seem to be getting a lot of uh, activity and, and recognition from people on LinkedIn. So what? Um, so going back to the classifications that you were talking about, you know, resolving disputes and getting the uh, shippers and the carriers on the same page and all that stuff, is there one, uh, one or two um, common examples uh, common that you, you saw that was recurring you know that using the Pareto principle the 80 20 rule okay. what was in that 80 percent uh, or the the top 20 percent or what top, the uh, the, the 80 percent or no the 80 percent the you know what was um was there a couple of classifications or codes that um, came up the most often actually not Really, the so, the major issues uh, are uh, shippers in general don't know their classifications. When I started in the business 42 years ago, shippers had traffic people, mm. and uh, I used to have to meet with them on occasion to resolve issues between my carrier roadway and our customers. And I would go in, and and I heard more often than you would believe. I don't care what my classification is. I just want to know what I'm going to pay, mm. which is very common these days well, also. That doesn't surprise us, especially with the last conversation. You that's know, right. Which yeah. we, um, the irrelevant information, that's important in the overall process, but irrelevant to the customer that, to your point, right. just wants to know when they can get it there and how much it's going to cost them, right? Exactly. So you're saying every day was a, every every battle was a different battle when it comes to classification? Right? Mostly, yes. Uh, we would get calls from carriers because their customers were pushing back on what they corrected a bill to be. And we would get calls from shippers who complained about the carriers changing their bills and wanted to know why. So sometimes we would be on the carrier side and sometimes we'd be on the shipper side. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows it all as far as classification goes, including those of us who were at NMFTA. Mm. But uh, we, we thought, we think we provided a public service in, in trying to resolve these disputes amicably. Mm. Interesting. Um, so do you have, so obviously a jump start here takes place through what, Wednesday or Thursday of this week? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, what's the next event? Uh, you, you're, you're, uh, it's on your radar coming up. Uh, outside of SMC? Well, before we go too Either far, uh, t later on today, they have the Ignite speed meetings, and I have a table there. Uh, it's my first as an independent, uh, and I believe I have uh, a fairly full agenda of people who want to talk to me about a variety of things. Mostly, at least right now, I'm, I'm focusing on people who want to know about density versus classification. Uh, and then I do want to share my knowledge about dimensioning and uh, its deployment by LTL uh, companies and how they're using it, what they're using it for. A lot of people think they're just using it to get more money, 
which is a byproduct, but they're using it, as I said earlier, to get real, live, accurate data about mm. their customers' shipments so that they know how to cost it. So you've got a table. First time. That's, that's exciting, Don. Yep, it is. I'm looking forward to it. So now that would be, uh, you, you've got a Newell Enterprises mm -hmm. banner so folks can kind of... Well, the, the, hopefully SMC did me a good favor with the <laughs> signage. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah. So how do, um, for folks that aren't going to be here today uh, and don't have an opportunity to come out and, and meet a subject matter expert in, in, all, in many things transportation, how can folks find you? Uh, well, I, I'll follow up with what Will said, and I appreciate the, the pitch there. Uh, I am on LinkedIn. I'm active on LinkedIn. I've gotten probably two or three dozen new connections in the last week or two uh, following my my posts my articles that I've put out there and I'm available there yeah. um, probably the easiest place to find me would be in LinkedIn okay all right um, and you going back to what we were going to talk about so, so today you've got a table at the the, the networking meet and greet the ignite event and then what's the next event on your radar uh, there's a conference in Memphis in March uh, being uh, held by Transportation Logistics Council, TNLC, mm -hmm. and they invited me to sit on a panel um, discussing LTL pricing structures, what's happening, and the validity of the NMFC, so it was right in my wheelhouse, and they knew about me from previous uh, attendance at some of their conferences. I, I wonder so. if FedEx will be on that panel somewhere, <laughs> or somewhere during that event. Somewhere at TNLC, no, 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 no. no. They okay. they might be in attendance, but mm. uh, right, no. So, um, as the non, so everything you've shared today, Don, I am very ignorant of. I've never, I have arranged for um, when I was in the one of my first uh, manufacturing jobs was uh, working for a uh, small manufacturer in Columbia that that put together partition systems that went out to Walmart. Uh, sorry. A variety of different retailers, let's right. call it. Don't right. want to get in trouble here. Um, so arranging for that equipment, the finished goods to get out to the construction sites. Mm -hmm. uh, I was involved in, right. in, in, in all of those logistics. But getting down into the nuts and bolts, the classifications, and a lot of the, your expertise is foreign territory for me. So this next question, pardon if it's naive, but in all of your panel discussions and, and your, spe your speeches and your, um, you know, when you're sharing your thought leadership, um, is there one thing that, or a couple things, a short list of things that you really believe most shippers aren't aware of that they need to know that it needs to be front of mind as they're, especially as they're navigating through this type of transportation environment? Know, the, know your freight. Um, like I said before, once upon a time they had traffic people, they don't now. The, the 3PL industry basically grew when LTL was deregulated in 1980. And these are the people who are in a perfect position to provide that expertise that the shippers don't have anymore. Uh, I work with 3PLs a lot, and I, I've been to several of them training their people on classifications so that they could help their customers, um, trying to get the right stuff on the bill of lading at the time of pickup, and then you don't have any surprises or problems mm. that happen later on so uh that's another great value here at, uh, at jumpstart is there's a lot of 3pls here that i'm networking with and some of them are going to be stopping by my table and, and learning more and uh, hopefully i can help them help their customers um, resolve that issue because realistically the customers shouldn't have to know right as long as somebody does right. uh, and they should hire the right people who can and do want to help them mm. so know your freight that's words live by and this man knows his absolutely uh looking forward to seeing you at ignite um we're going to be here all day i wish we were here all week but uh, uh we have a variety of competing scheduling priorities but uh this has been don newell with newell Inter enterprises you can find him on linkedin you can see him at ignite do you want to share any other contact information uh, that, you can put my email out there okay so if you want to reach don and, and pick his brain uh and, and significant transportation expertise you can reach him at don.newell and that's n-e-w-e-l-l dot -L 2018 at gmail.com and i'm sure you'll enjoy speaking with him as as much as uh, will hairway and i have uh, sure. today i'm glad kevin springer with smc3 connected us thank you very much i appreciate it you bet so that wraps up our fourth segment of the day here at jumpstart 19 well 
Uh, we're chugging right along, right? It feels like it's Thursday. Right? I know. <laughs> hey, it's good when it happens quick. Like it's good this. to stay busy. Oh, I it's like great it. to stay busy. It's great to stay busy. And, and I want to make sure we, we keep Don's tagline uh, front and center. We need T-shirts. Know your freight. Know if your you freight. know your freight, everything else will fall into place uh, for the most part. For Maybe, the most right? part. It's not yep. easy. Yep. Um, so to our audience, stay tuned as we broadcast live. Uh, live interviews all day. Thought leadership from this rock and roll supply chain event today. Jumpstart 19, courtesy of our friends at SMC3. Uh, be sure to check out our upcoming events, replays of our interviews, and other resources at supplychainradio.com. Of course, Will, we can, uh, everyone can find us on iTunes and SoundCloud. We love our subscribers. We love our subscribers. That's right. We love so. our downloaders. Three million. <laughs> Three, million. Three and a half. Three and, Three and a half, half million. Uh, there we go. Let's get um, to four. That's right. That's right. So on behalf of uh, Will Haraway, Chris Barnes, and our Malcolm and the research team, go, uh, the entire Supply Channel Radio team, this is Scott Luton wishing you a wonderful week. Uh, thanks to Don Newell for his time, and we'll see all of you next time on Supply Channel Radio.